Welcome adventurers, what's going on guys? My name is Cody, this is Taking 20, a channel about all things role playing games. And today I wanna to talk to you players out there because I think that some of you guys are robbing yourselves of some of the fun, some of the excitement at the table when playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons or Starfinder because you're caught up in trying to win. So that's what I wanna talk about today. I hope you guys are ready, let's get started. Man, I feel great. Took last week off, guys, in case you were wondering why there wasn't a video up last week or a couple of videos up last week. And that's because there's been a lot of craziness going on with the channel as of late. And uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to take the time off. I, <laughs> it was a lot of work to get all that stuff going. And then plus I'm working on some other projects. So took last week off. I feel great, ready to jump back into content. So in case you were wondering, that's, that's what happened. I just took last week off. Okay, now I wanna address a couple of quick elephants in the room and we're gonna jump into the video. The first is if you're one of the like 2,000 people that has subscribed to the channel over the last couple of weeks, wow, uh, thanks for subscribing, thanks for hanging out with us and welcome to the channel. The second thing is, is if you've been here a while, you might notice there is a new background going on. Uh, playing with some things at the moment. Maybe it'll stay, maybe it won't. I don't know, we'll see. I'm sure uh, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments below just, just how bad you hate it. So let's jump into today's topic. All right, so what I wanna talk to you players about today is the concept of buying in. What exactly do I mean by buying in? Well, I'll tell you, I'm not talking about paying your dungeon master or your game master, okay? And that's a slightly different topic for another day. What I'm talking about is buying into the game, to the presentation on what your dungeon master or your game master is ultimately trying to present. See, I think that this is one of the biggest differences when it comes to new players that may be a little inexperienced and are trying to learn the game a little bit versus players that have been playing a really long time with multiple dungeon masters and game masters and who have even sat on the other side of the screen. I think it's really easy for new players especially to really get caught up in trying to win, trying to absolutely dominate any scenario that they're presented with, trying to win with utmost perfection, if you will. And a lot of times I think that this can rob them of some of the fun, some of the excitement at the table because they're trying to push back on what the DM is trying to present. I think that there's a great example of this in my recent Storm King's Thunder campaign that my group and I just wrapped up on Twitch and are still in the process of catching up here on YouTube. And if you've been following along with us on Twitch while we've been going through this campaign, you'll probably have noticed a reoccurring theme, a sort of pattern, if you will, with the players where they are getting caught up in trying to win and they're kind of refusing and pushing back on buying into ultimately the presentation given to them. A very specific example of this happened in one of the last few sessions that we had of the campaign where the players were tasked with trying to get on board this sort of floating casino, this riverboat, if you will, and gather some information. Originally, what I was trying to ultimately present to the players was a sort of espionage James Bond-like mission to give them a sort of break from the monotony of hack and slash, kill everybody, <laughs> you know, murder hobo all the way through the rest of the campaign, arguing with all the NPCs. And I thought that this would be a sort of fun break and kind of a cool, unique mission that might be a little memorable for them, give them something a little different, mix things up. And the way I did this was I had an NPC foreshadow this with the players that in order to gain access to this boat, they were not going to be able to take weapons on directly. Now, they might be able to sneak them on, and they would probably have to go in disguise, but they wouldn't be able to just walk into a casino in this magical setting where they know that magic exists armed. They wouldn't be able to. That was the task. That was the presentation. That was what I was hoping my characters and my players would buy into. And the players did a fantastic job of coming up with a very unique situation where they went invisible, they stuck around to the side of the boat with a bag of holding and stuck their weapons low into the side of the boat where nobody would see it that they could retrieve later. Really, really clever. And I loved this idea. I was 
completely happy with the solution that the players ultimately tried to do. Whether or not that they were going to turn this into a murder hobo or not, it was, it was a great solution to the players and, players and kudos to them for thinking of it. The only problem was is that one of the players got a little caught up in trying to win and didn't really buy into the scenario, buy into the situation, or buy into the solution that his fellow players had come up with. And he just tried to board the boat where they were kind of frisking everybody and making sure that they couldn't get into the casino with weapons. Naturally, he was denied entry and then he pushed back. He was denied entry again from the NPC and eventually he was denied access to the boat. Now, as the dungeon master for this nine, 10 month campaign, I am of the opinion that this was probably more to do with the player than necessarily the character. The player got a little caught up in trying to win and never really bought into the world or the problem that I was presenting, the challenge that I was presenting, and kind of forced himself down this one way of thinking where I'm going to win, I'm going to win exactly the way that I want to win, and he just, just didn't buy in. Now, I do want to say that it is perfectly okay for the player to want to tackle this problem this particular way, and he doesn't have to buy in. Again, I'm not telling you players out there to just let your dungeon masters or game masters railroad you. That's not really what I'm getting at. But I do think that the player's decision to do this really bogged down the game and kind of sucked the air out of the night's session, and I think robbed himself and some of the other players of some of the fun, some of the excitement that they could have had and that they were planning to have with that evening's adventure. Instead of focusing on and executing their well thought out plan, they were caught up in trying to play catch up and fix this kind of split party situation. And I just think it could have been a much easier, more enjoyable session for everybody if everybody at the table would have really bought into what the dungeon master was presenting. Now, please don't take this as a dungeon master that is whining or complaining about what one of his players did or didn't do. I am certainly capable of running whatever type of game my players want to run and handling and improving whatever type of situation that they get themselves into. Really what I'm saying is that it all comes down to trust. Do you trust your dungeon master? Do you trust your game master to put you in a fair situation that at least you will have the ability to flee from or the ability to overcome and succeed at. Because if you don't trust your game master or dungeon master to run a fair game, then why are you still playing in their game? So players, if your dungeon masters or game masters are trying to present something to you, and you can tell they're trying to present a maze or a puzzle or a unique situation that might be a little different, and you could tell that that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to lead you into something that they think anyways is going to be a lot of fun. Instead of worrying about trying to win the game, you should probably buy in because that's what's going to be the most fun. If I sit down at Gen Con this year and across from me, my dungeon master or game master is Chris Perkins, Mike Merles, Jeremy Crawford, James Sutter, Owen Stevens. And if any of those guys are presenting a puzzle or a maze or having my character plan out a bank heist, what I'm going to do is I am going to buy in because ultimately that is going to be what is the most fun. I'm going to have a great time. I'm going to make lots of jokes and I'm going to just enjoy what they are presenting me and take it for what it is, a game of Dungeons and Dragons or Starfinder. So there you go, guys. There's my opinion on buying into what the Dungeon Master is presenting to have the most fun at the table. What do you guys think? I'm sure you all have opinions. Is this good advice? Is it bad advice? Am I telling all these players to go get railroaded and stuff like that? Or is it solid advice to have a lot of fun at the table? What do you guys think? Do you buy in to what your Dungeon Master is presenting? Or do you just do whatever the hell you want to do? If this is your first time here and you love role playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I'll be putting out new videos on DM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and as always, may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. There's your plot hook. There he is.